Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. And today we're happy to have with us once again Anthony Cusimano, the Technical Marketing Director at Object First. Anthony, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, David. It's good doing this the every year. Yeah, I, I love uh, getting the chance to speak with you both on here and in person at trade shows. So I'm looking forward to uh, the conversation. So I guess if you want, let's kick things off. Uh, maybe just give a quick overview of Object First. Yeah, absolutely. So Object First is the the latest venture by uh, Ratmer Timoshev, Andre Baranov, founders of Veeam. Uh, they're doing it again, but this time, rather than uh, focus on the the data mover, the backup layer like they did with Veeam, they had a vision to create a ransomware proof storage device specifically built for Veeam that uh, will act as that immutable object storage landing zone for all Veeam backup data. And we really stick to our guns on this. Uh, I think, you know, in the last time we've talked, we've actually even published a paper all about how we had someone come in and try to hack our box, a whole third party security testing team, and they were not able to get in and do it. So we take data security very seriously and we take Veeam data protection data security very seriously. So we say it's the uh, best way to store your Veeam data is to store it on an object first OOPI device. Now, you know, we've talked many, many times over the years, and I'm a big fan of OOPI and object first technology. If you could uh, maybe dig into that technology a little bit more and explain it to viewers and maybe talk about what makes it unique as well. Absolutely. So OOPB, just in case uh, you haven't seen us talk before, stands for out of the box immutability. It's not just a, a goofy name that's fun to say. It has has meaning and purpose. Uh, it is an object storage device, so it uses S3 object storage. It's a hardware physical appliance. We've customized the operating system. It's Linux. We've done our own security revision on that. We've also come up with our own unique storage layer for how we ingest and manage object storage. So it's not just a uh, 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 recreation of Amazon S3, it's object first own object storage repository. Now, all of this is inside of a hardware physical appliance and you rack and stack it, put it in your data center. The, the real magic of what we've done is through both the software layer of our own proprietary object storage source code, purpose built for backup, by the way, and specifically Veeam backup. We saw the need to ensure that when backup data is written, it stays written. So our, our, Key focus is being essentially ransomware proof. I mentioned that security test. The way we did this is, is, a, is a little bit twofold. The first was harden everything, right? Every single layer, the data layer, the storage layer, the operating system layer, the firmware, it's all security hardened. We focused very much on how to, you know, how do you build something from the ground up security oriented in, in you know, the year 2025? But on top of that, we limit access to everything. We call it zero access for destructive actions. So as an admin or as an object first employee or a support person at object first, you have no access to go in and delete anything on the box once it is written with an immutability window on it. So your storage buckets, your backup data, all of that remains unchanged and immutable uh, out of the box for whatever time period you set on there. And I would say that's honestly one of our biggest distinguished features from all the other vendors out there. The limited access we give, many people take it as an offense. Like, oh, I'm an admin. Why aren't you letting me manage and edit my data? It's like, well, you can be compromised. In a breach situation, you know they're going to have your username and password. You know they're going to have your S3 keys. What's the damage they can do with that data? So we've just said, we're going to eliminate that. We do not allow anyone to go in and manipulate the data for destructive actions at all. You can always go in and create buckets. You can create more S3 keys, but you can't delete anything so long as it's within that, within that immutability window. And all of this was designed explicitly to ingest and maximize the security of Veeam data. And you look at other vendors out there, when, when data comes across whatever interface it is, in our case, it's S3 using the SOS API in Veeam, Oftentimes, it will land in some kind of landing zone or a buffer or a cache. These are often not immutable either or secure. It's meant to be fast, receive the data, then disseminate it to its final resting place. We said, no, nah, that's not going to work for us. So we actually took our landing zone and integrated that with our long-term retention zone, which is a RAID 6 array. And the data, once it lands on our, our device, is immutable the second it's written. 
So there's no man in the middle attack. There's no way that any breach could actually lead to destruction of data. And like I said before, we ended up paying this third party vendor that called NCC Group to come in and really put it to the test. We gave them access to the source code. And we also gave them access to a, a hardware device and they were not able to hack our box. After they found uh, a couple of things for us to fix, we fixed it and they, then they went back at it and they're like, you guys are as secure as it gets. So we took it very ser seriously on the data security front. And that's, I think, the biggest differentiator for us. That on top of the fact that it only takes 15 minutes to rack stack configure and never touch our device again. But, uh, you know, that's a bonus on top of everything else. Now, you, you mentioned Veeam a couple of times. Yeah. What are some of the specific problems and challenges that Object First is specifically solving for Veeam users? So I think the big one, and, you know, Ratmir and Andre saw this when they founded this company is, Veeam users are, are often at the mercy of their budget and what's going on in their data center. They probably have either existing storage, legacy storage, or they're building their own storage, right? It's what can I get and what can I fit into my Veeam environment? So many of them are using direct attach directly on their Veeam servers. And, you know, we understand that, you know, tight budgets and, you know, limited resources, that's an IT admin's, you know, bread and butter for how they get by in a lot of ways, but it's not sufficient when it comes to actual data security for backup storage and specifically in the Veeam environment, Veeam backup data, right? Veeam is, you know, it's a data mover and it's a great data mover. I think it's the number one, uh, number one used backup platform on the planet. But what Veeam doesn't do is keep that data secure after it's written, right? You can turn on encryption, but if you can blow away the storage device that the encrypted data is on, it doesn't matter if it's encrypted or not. So we slide in and fill that specific niche of, of a need that was needed to be filled on the Veeam side by being a very simple, easy to use, but importantly, secure storage. Now, I mentioned the SOS API earlier. That's Veeam's own proprietary data mover for object storage. We just so happen to be lucky enough to be building this product right when they were uh, doing this, this S3 API. It's great for us because it allows us to ingest object storage data directly from Veeam in a very optimized fashion. So, you know, on our boxes today, you can get the two gigabytes per second per node ingesting object storage over that SOS API. And it also does a lot of the data management too. So you're not really giving anything up by adding us into your environment. You're essentially ransomware proofing your entire Veeam setup. And we've we've had customers and we're actually going to have a, um, a panel at Veeam on where it talks about a, a real scenario where they were hit by ransomware and Ootby was the only thing left in their environment that was able to bring back any data and get them back in a working state. So, you know, it's it's really important that we built what we build and released it when we did because we don't see this epidemic slowing down in any way, shape, or form. Now, you you talked about, uh, you know, all the things you've done with Veeam. What does an Object First and a Veeam partnership look like? How, you know, how do you guys work with Veeam? I, you mentioned uh you know the founders of object first and and their you know their founding of veeam uh so i know there's been a long history there before you know between the two companies yeah it's it's actually a great partnership you know we do have some veeam talent inside of our r d and sales and marketing departments but really what it comes down to is just awareness and knowledge of Veeam and the Veeam environment. We keep up with all of their updates. We try and stay in touch with their, their product management team and know what they're doing. You know, even on my own team, I've got, I've got my own uh, community manager on my team who's constantly, he's a Veeam legend, he's a Veeam vanguard. He's doing the Veeam thing on top of doing his own job at Object First. So we, we bleed Veeam in a way because we are so uh, acknowledging of the fact that they're the they're our customer just as much as our customers are our customer, right? Like we're trying to help them as much as we're trying to help Veeam customers ourselves. So we're we're just trying to stay lockstep and key, you know, going to events like Veeam on, having conversations with them, keeping up with all of their developments, their betas, seeing what they're working on, seeing how we can help fill more needs, fix more more, more things that fall outside of their purview. So it's been a really good relationship so far, and and I think it's going to continue to be so. Now you mentioned Veeam on. Uh, you and I are both. We talked about it. We're both going to be at the show again. We've both been there for many years now. I know you know Object First is going to be a sponsor uh, of the event, as you have done for many years. Uh, what does Object First have planned for Veeam on this year? And do you have any announcements that are coming up that you're able to share today with us? 
Boy, do I. So we actually just got done with our, our launch event this week, uh, the re recording of this this program. But uh, we we launched brand new boxes, a 20 terabyte, a 40 terabyte, a 432 terabyte box. We also released our newest firmware version 1.6, which had some some nice performance improvements. But believe it or not, there that's not all. <laughs> there is more. So at Vmon, there's going to be some some new announcements about uh, our acquisition models and pricing models. And I don't want to say too much here. I got to save the surprise for the the uh, the show floor, but we'll be doing another live event where we talk about this uh, these new announcements and what they mean for our customers and, and, and some of the new exciting features coming out with that. But on top of that, we've got a lot to talk about just with what we've announced in the last month. So there's there is so much for us to bring and show at Vmon, and and like I mentioned before, we've also got some good speaking sessions lined up. So it's it's really lining up to be a huge event for us. And, and you always have a good booth too. I mean, every yeah. year I've come by, and and you had something fun, something interesting happening at the booth, and uh, you know I've always had great conversations and great demos. So I'm definitely looking forward to that once again at uh, at this upcoming event. Yeah, we'll be. I'll be doing trivia again. So if you swing by the booth at the right time, I think we're doing uh, six different sessions. So and we're giving away a huge. Uh, if you've seen Star Wars: Return of the Jedi, you know Jabba's land cruiser thing. We're giving away six of those. So if you come and you win trivia, you can walk home, or maybe maybe fly home, or ship at home. I don't know. You choose. <laughs> but uh, with one of these massive Jabba the Hut Lego kits, so it's going to be a good time. Wow. Well. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so I may have to take you up on that. All right. We'll, um, we'll give you a shot. <laughs> I'd love to get your take on uh, what's happening there, you know, with all the trends that are taking shape across uh, so far this year and, and what looks to be coming the rest of this year. What are the, some of the trends that you're seeing personally and how might those trends be helping to drive the, you know, object first roadmap? So the I think the one trend that everyone's going to tell you, and I'm I'm going to avoid saying, is that that two letter word right. uh, that seems to just be everywhere. And and you know the positive I can say is we're not doing anything with that at Object First because we don't need to, right? Like we're really focused on our primary use case, which is be the best storage for Veeam, be a ransomware proof object storage target. Yes, it's a huge trend, and yes, everyone is talking about it, building it, you know, thinking about it. But what I see, in all honesty, is just more data at the end of the day. Just like every time some new cool thing comes out and it blows up everything, the one thing that, that truly changes is the amount of data that we create, manage, and ingest. And it's not going to get any smaller, unfortunately. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And the bigger the data, the bigger the target. Uh, we just did some research recently, um, and we saw that 96% per time, uh, 96 of the time that a ransomware attack happens the ransomware goes after the backup data. And I have a fear personally that as these data sets, get, data sets get so big that it becomes almost impossible for them to get backed up by normal means, we're going to see ransomware just go full ham on trying to corrupt, manipulate, and destroy uh, any kind of data set that is, is of large amount. That's why it's so important that people start really thinking about like, what's my actual plan of recovery? What do I need to back up versus what is, you know, non you're negotiable in, in that case? Um, it's not slowing down. I, I do think the uh, AI aided ransomware folks that are using both voice manipulation, face manipulation, pretending to be other people. It's one thing to have a username and password. It's another thing to pretend to be an entirely different human being. And we're seeing that start to creep up and happen. These kind of breaches are only going to get worse and worse. And people really need to be thinking about what's my strategy if I get hit? How do I recover? How long is it going to take? Have I tested this? Do I know where everything's going to go? These are the things that keep me up at night as someone whose data is being used by hundreds of businesses. Like I think every business needs to really take this seriously and not just follow the cool trend, but think about what does the implication of this trend mean for their data and their backup data specifically. Well, that's a great point. Uh, we 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 do keep talking about the two letter, you know, AI. Everybody mentions yep. it, but uh, you're right. You're exactly right. Storage, uh, the amount of data that's that's you know getting created because of it is is going to continue to blow up, and this is going to you know exasperate the problem. So you're spot on there. Now, Anthony, before I let you go, uh, I wanted to say thank you. I wanted to let you know I will look forward to see you 
at Veeamon. Uh, but for the folks who can't come to Veeamon and uh, they can't see you in person, where can they go to find out more and what kind of things can they can they come learn about uh, to, you know, about Object First online? Absolutely. So our website is the best place to go if you just want the latest information for Object First, it's just objectfirst.com. Uh, we've got our, our latest launch event on there. You can see all the announcements I mentioned earlier. You can see me talk to various people uh, in that live event. But for the VMON event itself, you know, we are going to be live broadcasting uh, from the show floor our, our second launch of the month. So tune into that. Uh, you can follow us on LinkedIn to get all of the details about when that'll be. It'll also be posted on our little website banner. So if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest news, go there. We also do a live show on our YouTube account uh, once a month. It's called Zero Gravity. We're doing an episode on Veeam on uh, the week before. So you can always uh, follow us on YouTube and see that there. But there's so many places to go to get information. None of them are bad. <laughs> Perfect. Well, all right. Well, thanks again. I appreciate your time. And I uh, thank you too for uh, joining us on VM Blog and talking with our audience. Thanks for having me, David. All right. Take care.